I refuse to get distracted by. But yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the, the police, yeah, so I joined the police back in 2007 at the ripe old age of 20. And it was a bit of a culture shock for me, as God be said. I, I've always been a bit of a bit of a rebel. And so joining the police, I had to, to grow up very quickly. And, um, and I was lucky enough to find the business back in 2011. And this was shortly after um, our son, our, our eldest, was born. And we joined then with the sole intention of buying ourselves a new freezer for the garage. That was our goal. And um, we kind of were told at the time that this, you know, this can really develop legs and you can. And so sort of, you know, one of our outrageous dreams was obviously for me to be able to leave the police one day. And I think like so many, we, we did at the time believing maybe blindly believing that, that we could do it. And then you, you kind of, as you progress, th those dreams, those realizations just become that, that little bit more tangible, I suppose. So we got our freezer in any case, which, which Claire, my wife, was absolutely delighted by. And that showed us that it worked. And um, obviously by that time, it, we got paid slightly differently back then. So um, residual versus quick, quick wasn't even a thing. So our residual was mounted up quite nicely over the years. And it always gave me this dilemma because I loved being a police officer and it has always been the biggest part of my life. And if you'd have said to me, even two years ago, you won't be in the police in two years time, I would never have believed you because it was, the police was just life. I was institutionalized. I was grumpy a lot of the time, but I was, I was institutionalized and I, I really believed that was the best I could do. And I think it's probably fair to say that when I, when I joined the police as a, as a young lad sort of growing up, I had all of these dreams of driving fancy cars, living in fancy houses, and I just kind of let all of those go. And I, I, suffered, I, I settled, I think, for what would have been quite a comfortable life in the police service. You know, the, the pension at the time was, was good. Um, it still is good. It's, it's just not quite perhaps what it was. But I let go of a lot of those dreams. And I think I just accepted that we'd be comfortable. We'd never really managed to, to realise a lot of the dreams and, and goals that I'd had as a younger person. And then over the years, being part of the business, a lot of those dreams have kind of come back in. And now I'm a lot more excited about our future than, than I've ever been at any other point in the business. And I had, you know, I, the, the police is a very, they're a very cynical group of people. And so the, the abuse, frankly, that I got from people when I said that I, I joined Utility Warehouse and, and was doing this thing. And I had friends telling me I should just go and get a bar job a couple of nights a week. Why was I wasting my time on this? And um, these are friends, incidentally, that nowadays, when, when we, in non-lockdown times, when we go out, I'm, I'm the one that has to buy their drinks for them because they always message me before we go out to point out how skint they are and how they can't afford their own drinks. And these are the people that gave me this, you know, amazing financial advice back along. Mm. Um, so the police definitely, you know, it's been a massive, massive thing, not the easiest environment to work under. Even at the moment, I, I'm still in touch with a lot of my old pals from, from my team. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, an area rife with politics. And that's a story for another day, really, as to, to what really burned me out of my policing career. But certainly this was last year now. I'm forgetting my years, but this was a, a little over a year ago now. I just made the decision one day and I can't even explain to this day what, what it was that led me here but we were going to express day I was traveling up in the car with a, a pal of mine and um, I just decided there and then for whatever reason that I don't want to be in the police anymore I, I want to do the business and I was very cautious about that because I was mindful that I was you know experiencing the whole furor of express day and all of the excitement that goes with it so I left it a good few days afterwards and actually what also really helped me, I, I came out of Express Day and I had a text message on my phone that was from my bank to say that I'd gone over my overdraft limit. So I was then being charged. And it was just a combination of factors that led me to the decision that things obviously aren't working. I, I'm, I'm working an awful lot more than I ever really wanted to be working. I'm only seeing the children every five weeks. I got four days off with my children, which was you know, a, a real blow to us as a family as well. And then obviously to get this message and decide actually that, so, so time freedom wise, I'm not achieving my goals. Money wise, definitely not achieving my goals because I'm over my overdraft limit. Something's got to change. And I've not looked back really for, from that day onwards. And I've very much been out and about doing neighbor letters, doing whams, doing everything, growing a customer base, growing the, the team and we are very much the one thing i haven't said actually is in that time such was my focus on the police for a long time of that there, there are a good three and a half four years 
where I was completely inactive in the business. I say completely, I, I coasted, but coasted at a very, very minimal amount. It just wasn't my focus at the time. And then last year, pretty much the year before, just picked that back up again. And we obviously hit group leader last month, hit the 100 plus clubs. So that will probably give you an indication of the fact that I've never been an amazing customer gatherer. I, I've always focused very much on the recruiters and the team building. I, I can hold my own, but I, I'm not a superstar when it comes to customer gathering, definitely not. Um, but we've, uh, we've doubled uh, the size of our business. We, we've doubled our group customers in just over a year. So I, I've proved very much that you can go from having a very sort of average start, which is very much how I started, and then really... I don't want to use the term set the world on fire, but definitely with, with momentum and with, with the right mindset, you can really start to propel things forward. So you, you kind of um, use Express Day a bit like, um, I suppose, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. You kind of woke up going, where am I going in my life? You know, is this, you know, I've got no time with my family. You had a great job in the police. I'm sure it paid you well. And suddenly to make that decision to go, well, actually, I want to step away from that now and go full-time self-employed most people would run a mile from that so that was a big big step and then also you mentioned about you know you kind of coasted for a bit and then you got going again what got you going again was it that kind of goal setting kind of where am i going in my life and yeah and i think i i'm one of these people definitely i've watched for for many years people you know such as yourself and, and some of the other guys that i can see on the call today really sort of develop a really good reputation for being really really good at this business and I, i've always told myself over those times oh, i'm not really going to be one of those people i'm quite happy sort of doing my thing i justified it in my mind an awful lot and another i think another really relevant point to make is a, a book that i would recommend to anybody that is brutal is um larry wing it shut up stop whining and get a life i don't know if anybody's ever heard of that and when i say brutal I mean brutal. And we were in Mexico, we'd gone on holiday and it was a book that Claire, my wife, had, had taken out with her. And she was really, really insistent, far more insistent than Claire would normally be that I read this book. And I know now, <laughs> they're very obvious to see. Um, and whether I should admit this, I don't know, but I, um, I was inconsolable having read that book. I read it inside of a day, a day and a half. And, um, and I just couldn't get my, my thoughts together, gather my feelings and quite truly inconsolable that night because I realized that I'd just squandered years of this opportunity. Um, and I knew then there was something in me having read just that book and whether it's, whether it's that book, whether it's another book, there are, um, uh, other branded books are available, I should point out, but whether it's that book or whether it's another one that just resonates with you, there is, there is so much on the written page. There is so much self-development that is, is in our space. Um, that just happened to be the book that, that spoke to me, I guess. And so, so that was definitely part of that decision. And just a number of other factors of just getting very much downtrodden in the police. There are a number of factors in the police with, as I said earlier, the, the politics, but family not, life not being, you know, not managing to spend that time. And I think what really swung it just that afternoon was just that text message about the, the overdraft and realising actually that financially I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And, do you know, with a combination of quip, with a combination of supporting almost month in, month out, not completely, but almost month in, month out, I've doubled my police salary every month since I've left and gone full time in the business. Wow. Wow. OK. So, so, so what keeps you going today then, Joe? And, you know, you get out of bed, you know, whatever time in the morning, what starts your day? Do you have a plan of action? Do you just wing it? <laughs> Well, do you know, I, I'm not, I'm not perfect here. I want to make this point. I'm not as organized as I should be even now. Um, but last year when I first started properly taking this seriously and properly going after some goals, I bought a whiteboard and I have to say, I've been told by so many people to just be organized and buy a whiteboard. In fact, it's this whiteboard behind me. That's one of them. And I've got another one there. Um, and I, I can't tell you how that changed my business because you can visually see what you've got coming in the week and yeah. nowadays it isn't this a funny time to to be involved in this business and it's a funny time to be alive that things are weird and people make some really strange decisions i did two mentored appointments yesterday um one quoting 55 pounds a month savings where, where they want to go away and think about it and 
you can't control these things. And the one thing I'm finding in the team is that the, the new people actually are, are really, um, for, for many of us, leading the way and showing us what can be done because they've got a, a really good warm list of, of people in their, in their circle. Um, but for me, yes, I'm not perfect. I have a very wonderful, very organised wife who, who is very supportive. And in the last year, Claire's taken a much more active role in the business, which has been, has been very wonderful. But really, I, I think the, the best advice that I was given, I didn't always adhere to this advice, I have to say, but more recently, certainly the last year I have been, is just never doing my last appointment. So as I sit here, I've got at least three or four appointments lined up, which I'm mindful that's not even that many. So I've got more to do. Personally, I've, I, I'm taking part in a challenge at the moment, um, which, which some others in the network are doing, where we do um, 21 pieces of action a day, 21 rainmaking activities per day. That, for me, I'm finding is a, is a really good thing mentally as well, because some, some of this, I, I find I very much know the difference going to bed of an evening when I've been productive versus days where I've been lazy. And I have very few lazy days now. Um, and I know going back to when I left the police, I, I had some really lazy days back then. One of my lowest days after I left, which was really bizarre, was the day that I just decided to binge watch some rubbish telly. And I just thought, oh, wow, I've left the police now. I'm free. Look at me. I'm living this amazing entrepreneurial lifestyle of, of doing what I want when I want. And, and I spent the whole afternoon binge watching. It was so rubbish, I can't even remember what it was, something on Netflix. And I felt absolutely dreadful that day. And so I definitely know the difference going to bed when I've been productive versus when I haven't. And this challenge that I've just opted to take part in um, has definitely just doing that extra bit of activity. I think sometimes when you do a challenge like this, you don't realise how much you do actually day to day. And, and you realise, actually, I do a lot of this stuff anyway. But when you can actually write it down, and you've got something tangible in front of you and you can go to bed at night knowing that you've done a good job and that you're moving your business forward. That's been um, that's been a good motivator at the moment. So, so who do you look for for inspiration? Do you have any mentors? Does your sponsor mentor you? Or is it predominantly you? You set the plan, you set the target, you, you drive yourself, or do you have someone else that really drives it with you? Apart from your wife, Claire. Apart from my wife, Claire. Yeah, so we're very lucky. We've got some great mentors in the business, um, some, some great friends that I've made along the way, sort of out of team, so not people that are in my upline. Um, but Wes, Wes has been a constant source of inspiration to me. And Rob, I'm not just saying this because you're on the call, but even you know, back in the very early days, you've basically just made a living taking the mick out of me in, in ops and, and cops and things, and some of your, your one-liners about the police service. But it's funny because you join and, and you're a distributor and then you qualify and then you're working towards team leader and you, you never believe that you're going to... Well, you kind of do believe, but you don't. It's one of those things. It's so far in the future that you just look at the group leaders and the senior group leaders and go, wow. And then you kind of get there and then you're hungry for the next promotion. Um, but so I've always had that. We've been very lucky with, with people around that have very much taken us under their wing and, and helped us on our way. So, so we've, we've been very lucky in that regard. But you make some, you make some good friends as well. And, and people that even are in your, um, that aren't above you, that aren't, you know, in front of you in the business, people that are on, very much on the same level, you, you build these these strong bonds and relationships with. And, and we spent a good hour on the phone on, on Zoom last night to Paul and Kathy Duffield, who are good friends of ours. Um, and you just bounce off each other constantly. Stuart Edmonston and I climbed Kilimanjaro. Was it last? It was last year. Last year, um, along with a, a load of others. And I, I think that's another thing is that there's so much more to this, isn't there, than, than just the money and just the earnings. You, you develop those those friendships that just last a lifetime I heard, um kilimanjaro is um one of our company five star holidays so it must be easy to do so yeah. um <laughs> don't, don't do it definitely opt for the maldives that's the best advice i can give you do the maldives so joe you know um group leader 100 plus club member you know um you've been in the business a little while doesn't matter how how long because we talk about flying hours don't we because yeah. it's very easy as I was talking to someone the other day. I said, oh, I've been in the company over 20 years. And they said, yeah, but you've only been working it for about five. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's all about activity, isn't it? Because it's very easy to just get up, do the washing, do the ironing, um, do the cooking, um, and make excuses not to make those phone calls, not to go through your existing customers, not to follow up the recruitment leads, not to work on your social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever, it's very easy to just drift and binge on Netflix. 
But, you know, I always think to myself, what would an entrepreneur be doing today? Would they be doing the ironing, cooking, washing, etc., Or would they have someone else do it? You know, pay, pay a cleaner or a gardener or whatever. Would they get focused on their business? Would they take their business seriously? And let's, let's be honest, you know, in the early days when I had no money, I couldn't afford to pay for a gardener or something. So you get on with it, but you are certainly more focused about I always remember Jimmy Chapman, he said, when you boil the kettle to make a cup of tea, are you watching the kettle boil or are you making another phone call? And I thought, I'm the guy who was watching the kettle boil. <laughs> and I had to change my mindset. It was about, you know, how many hours have you got in a day? Because the day goes very quickly, uh, especially if you're just drifting and watching the kettle boil. Yeah, and I think there's definitely definitely truth to that and and i remember i i've heard that from from jimmy several times and and, and other things but at the moment I, I think there's an element of we have to be very kind to ourselves and and i hope this kind of fits in line with with you guys i really do because early early on when this happened i was very much um it was my intention and, and indeed what we did was getting our team on the phones very early on and saying what you're doing is enough. You, you need to be kind to yourselves here. We are entering into some pretty unknown territory. You've never gone through anything like this before. And people are going to make some fairly odd decisions, when, even when it comes to, to switching their bills. And, and people are going to very much sit back and let this wash over them. But actually, our mantra, if you like, not even a mantra, but our intention for, for us was to just say to people, what you're doing is enough. You need to be moving forwards. You need to be going for these holiday promotions that have just been launched. But nobody at the moment needs to worry too much about hitting the leaderboards or setting the world on fire. We just need to do what we need to do to move forward. This will settle. We're going to get our skills up. We're going to try new things. And, and that is a lot of this. We, we know, don't we, that remote signups are here to stay. And actually, we're just very real with people and, and very kind with people. And I think back in the early days, I very much fell into the trap of thinking, oh, God, I have to be this utility warehouse machine. So I need to get up at this time and I need to do all of those things and cram every last thing in, into my day. And I think whilst I've never quite achieved that, I've never managed to turn into that UW machine. What I've managed to do is, is look at where my time is going. So I'm not, I'm not maybe at the level where I can boil the kettle and make a phone call, but I am at the level where I know if I want to do something sort of luxurious or chill out and, and kick back and watch a bit of telly or whatever, I, I personally of a day can only do that when I've been productive, when I've done something. And I tend to make my mornings the busiest. I do appointments and stuff in the evenings, as you'd expect in the normal world. But actually being productive in the morning then frees me up a little bit to do some stuff around lunchtime with the kids or whatever. And then I can get back into it in the afternoon. So I, I've never, again, I've, I've never been as disciplined. And I think this is something that even I'm very much learning now. I've never been as disciplined as, as I could be. And I definitely feel myself getting more and more disciplined as the, as the years and, and months go on. But as you say, it's having a work-life balance, isn't it? Because, you know, there's no point work, 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 and then neglecting your family. And then, you know, they go, who's dad again? <laughs> you know, so, yeah, having a work-life. And don't get me wrong, you know, there are times when myself and Emily go and walk the dog and I turn the phone off or put it onto silent because that's my time with the family, you know. Um, so Joe, um, top tips then, top tips for the team then. So I've um, got five minutes left, top tips, and then I might open it up. If anyone wants to ask questions, just put it on the chat box below. So a top tip for the team. Well, um, go for the incentives. And this, I, I massively undervalued the incentives at, at the start. Definitely go for the incentives, the holidays and things. And actually, do you know, we, we qualified for Orlando and that was the first in all my time in the business, that was the first holiday that we'd actually gone for. And I know that life will never be the same again now, having, having, gone, for these, having gone for these holidays. Mexico we're already well on course for as well. Um, definitely be kind to yourselves. Definitely take, take time out, but be productive. And, and I think you will know the difference as well between the days where you've been productive and the days where you haven't. So touch your business every day is the obvious one that, that we're always, always told. But at the moment, we probably need to touch our businesses a little bit more than we once did in order to maintain the same momentum. So just, just be active around, around your business, definitely. Go for the incentives. Do, do not allow yourself, like I did so many years, to just sit out of these incentives. Oh, it's okay, I'll get the next one. Or, oh, you know, I didn't really like that destination anyway. I used to tell myself <laughs> like it was all right. Like, and it fully justified why I didn't get 
all of those holidays over the years. Um, and keep in touch with people and definitely, definitely read or listen, whatever. I, I've got an Audible subscription. I'm more of a listener than a reader. I've got Audible with all of the, you know, the, the big names in there. And I listen to that more often than not. Sometimes I'll listen to music in the car. I'm, I'm just in, into that music frame of mind. But more often than not now, it's just listening to these audios. Anything by Jim Rohn, absolute genius. He, he's the guy that I, I go back to. Building your network marketing business, if that's one that I dare say a, a lot of you will probably nod at me that you've heard. I can listen to that thing every week and I, I often do. So personal development, go for the promotions and just, just be kind to yourself, definitely. But at the same time, be busy. That This is definitely the time. We, we've got some amazing stuff coming forward, coming down the track. And this is the time to be busy and make sure we capitalize on that. We have, um, we have Debbie's asked, um, do you have a follow-up system? A follow-up system? So customers or recruits or do you just have bits of paper on your desk or do you have it on your wall charts or? Yeah, so I use List Builder actually. I, I always used to use reminders. I've never been massively high tech. Um, I've never personally gone down the paper notebook thing, but I know a lot of people use that to very good effect. But for me, List Builder is perfect because it, it, it turns blue when I've got to take some action. I'm not always the best at make, taking the action there and then, but I've always got that blue list in front of me so that when something like this happens and you know our route to market, if you like, is different and we haven't got the doors to knock on or, or the whams to attend, I've got a list. Actually, I haven't got that many because I'm generally quite good at keeping on top of it, but list builder I've got um, and wham forms. I mean, th these are uncharted waters at the moment, aren't they? So, so the old wham forms that I'd put to one side that weren't necessarily good for a follow-up funnily enough that they they've come out and we're, we're working through our list of wham forms as well but follow-up definitely nothing for me nothing more technical than just using list builder and keeping accurate notes in there fantastic and um when you're making your phone calls joe and you've had loads of no's all day long and you go to bed that night you go i've made no more appointments i've got no further forward how do you keep positive um i go down the wes linden line and just zoom out and it's such a it's such a relevant piece of advice at the moment. So yesterday, as an example, I spent all afternoon from 12 until about 10 p.m., including the quarter of Duffields, admittedly, but I spent about 10 hours yesterday in front of Zoom. And if you look at that, I achieved zero in, in terms of monetary value. I, I signed up, we signed up neither of those customers yesterday. We've got, we signed up some good customers. They, they are definitely out there. It just so happens that the appointments we did yesterday didn't come off. One I suspect probably will in the next couple of days. But yeah. if I focus too intently on that, I could look at it. I've spent 10 hours. That's, that's more than a shift in the police. And I've not been, I've not been productive. I've not achieved anything. Um, but I'm a great believer in playing the ratios and, and half will, half won't. Maybe a little bit different at the moment. But I also know that I've got a, a, a very, even more stacked day today, a slightly more chilled day tomorrow. Um, but those numbers will come in. And if you take a massive step back from this, a massive zoom out from this, it is absolutely the case that in 10 years time, I don't know, Rob, we'll, we'll be somewhere, a group of us, won't we? And we'll be like, do you remember when, when COVID hit? And, you know, Joe, do you remember you were do, spending those evenings where you, you weren't signing up customers? If you zoom out from that, you know, the, those three no for nows that we heard yesterday and look very much into the future, they're, they're gonna, some of those no for nows are going to become yeses, obviously. But there, there's so much more to this than just that one 10 hour snippet of time. Very quickly, one, one other question. Those old WAM forms you've got, I mean, they can be quite old now. And I think more than a week is an old WAM form. So what do you say when you phone those WAM forms up? The line that I always start with is, you may or may not remember me. And sometimes they'll say, oh, yeah, I remember you. And you're like, you definitely don't remember <laughs> me. You've got no idea who I am. Um, and then just, just go into, look, we, we discussed at the time, utility warehouse. Um, you decided at the time it wasn't necessarily right for you. It wasn't something you were interested in. I'm just mindful with everything that's going on in the world um how quickly could we maybe get together for 20 minutes half an hour on zoom or on whatsapp video um just so that i can show you a little bit about what we do because for me my mindset at the moment isn't necessarily going after customers and start customers it's just getting the word out it's just letting everybody know who we are and what we do and what we can do for people and then make letting them make a decision whether this is right for them you know you know i i'm more of a people person face to face eyeball to eyeball and i find it hard on the phone but um, something I have learned um, by accident, I suppose, um, there was a guy I phoned on, on a WAM for many, many times. So, oh, phone me in three months. Now's not the time. Now's... I kept saying that. And then recently, we, I got onto the phone. We got talking. I thought, do you know what? I'm not going to mention this. 
utility way I was going. So we're going to talk to him about him. What is he up to? What, you know, and do you know what? We had a great conversation. It must have taken us 20, 30 minutes talking about, you know, where he used to work and now he's retired and he's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of it, I said, oh, by the way, you know, uh, in three months time, I'll give you a call again about your utilities. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, we might as well talk about it now. <laughs> nice. And I, I discovered that on the phone, you do need to make friends with people. It's not a sales call. It's, hey, we met once. You might not remember me. As you just said there, Joe, it's kind of getting into them in, the, in that kind of friend zone, isn't it? Make, finding a little bit more about them instead of yeah. just... And it could lead you down a completely different path. This has happened with me a couple of times now where I phone somebody, more the people I know, not so much like the cold whamleys, but people I know and one lady who's quite high up in the NHS and she's having a mayor of it and she's having a bit of a breakdown, her words, not mine. It's not even slightly the right time to even introduce the, the idea of UW to her or, or yeah. reintroduce it. And so it's very much a kind of th thing that's left. So it can just take you down, oh, one of my children joining me. Um, you right. can take things down, you know, a, a completely different path. Yeah. So um, definitely, and with the, the people we know in our, in our circle of life, um, it, it's so much that, that this advice is more relevant now than ever. I think it's just staying friends for the sake of staying friends and keeping in touch for the sake of keeping in touch. And okay. some of these people will come back to us. I've had this this last month where somebody's got back to me asking if I can take a look at their bills for them just because we've kept in touch. And also, also getting in touch with your distributors that have gone a bit quiet. Let's, let's make phone calls to them. You know, they might be finding it really hard as well. And they might, you know, you know I've spoken to some distributors that didn't know about Quip. You know, yep. still thought we were paid 10 or 20 pounds to get a customer, you know, and that's woken them up. And they're like, wow, hang on, this is a little bit different. This might help me and going from there. Um, my, Joe, my clock today, just on that front, is, is a guy that um, got the flying club very quickly about four years ago. And, and we've text sort of sporadically ever since. Um, but it's just us just getting back in touch with each other and showing him the changes to the business. So definitely, you know, pe people that are no for now, but a partner already, that these are the people to speak to at the moment. Yeah, Joe, Joe, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, giving up your time today. I know you're very busy. Um, obviously, your son wants to get out and play in the garden or something, so I wouldn't take up any more time. Um, thank you again. Um, I've recorded this. I'll send the recording to you, and if you're happy, we're going to put it out there to the team as well. Um, love Larry Winger. I've never read that book. It's been recommended so many times. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that book. Um, that's a great recommendation, so thank you. And um, thank you much uh, have a safe day. Stay safe, mate. I look forward to seeing you at Senior Group Leader and beyond. Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Everybody. Cheers. Take, Take care. Bye-bye.